Hey guys, I'm LGU and I'm a progressive and melodic house producer from Italy. Welcome to my studio. And today I'm here in the Abstract Music Lab YouTube channel to let you show the projects of my song Above It All, which was released in, uh, in Colorides. So yeah, let's dive into the project. And let's take a short playthrough of the most important part of the song, starting from the, the first drop. And then we can go to the to the break. Then the build up. So I think that uh, we should take a look into the arrangement. So this is the extended mix. As you can see, there is a one minute intro. Then we have one minute drop, um, a short bridge, uh, a breakdown, the build up. Then we have another short bridge and then the drop two and finally the outro. Um, talking about, um, a bit more about the arrangement, what I like to do in my, my own track is to start with the few elements in the first drop, then uh, through, through the song, adding more sounds and to, you know, to make the track evolve. In the first drop, right in the middle of the first drop, there is another layer of the bass coming in. Uh, we have the main lead coming in, which sounds like this. So this is the most, probably the most important uh, element of the song. And then, yeah, there is the, um, there is a, a short bridge that helps the drop going into the breakdown. Then, yeah, into the breakdown, the lead is changing a bit. I always like in the breakdown to introduce a new element into the breakdown, which in this case is this lead right here, which plays different notes and is slightly different also in sound as the lead of the main drop, uh, in the, the drop one, sorry. And then, yeah, we have the, the build up right here where I bring back mostly all of the drums to, to make the tension a bit higher. As you can hear, the, the kick is a bit filtered. We don't have the high frequencies of the kick. And then, you know, we have the build up. And then I, I really like lately to have this kind of bridge where all the tension, all the tension goes down, slowly go down, and then it comes back and hits hard into the, the second drop, basically. And yeah, then we have the drop two, or the main drop, as you can call it, which all the, the, um, the tension of the track uh, is being released. Then we have the last part of the second drop where the main lead, um, this lead right here, is coming back into the track. And yeah, then we have the, 
the outro, which is pretty simple. Yeah, I will start to, to talk uh, about the kick and the relationship between kick and bass, which is really important that I think is the most important part of a progressive house song. So the kick is this one. It's a pretty standard kick. I think this one was from Audio Tent. And there is a bit of a cue going on, nothing really crazy. And I shortened the kick um, a lot. Because as you can hear, the kick without the shaper box was really long and I don't need it to have a, a really sh a long kick because this track is really fast and I think that it really don't need this long kick right here. So, And then yeah, we have the bass. This is how we sound the bass uh, in the first part of the drop. And then right here in the, in the second part, you can hear that there is this um, this fifth bass coming in. It's something that I really like to do lately to always uh, keep the track fresh. Uh, let's listen to the kick and bass together. So what I like to do with my bass is to keep the sub uh, separate from uh, the bass himself, itself because it gives a lot more control to me and so I can mix them together a lot better. And the main bass is a Riz bass from Serum. This is a patch I think from PML. Yeah, it is. So, and this is how it sounds. What is really interesting, I think, um, in this space is this LFO right here, which really helps um, the bass to, to stay fresh, in my opinion. So instead of having a standard bass which sounds like really static, I like to give it like some movement and this really helps a lot to, to keep the bass moving. And this is the sub, a really standard sub. I mean, I made this by my own some years ago in Serum. So, as you can hear, it's pretty much a, a sine wave. And then, yeah, in the second part, uh, I added this, um, this layer right here. As you can hear, there is not the, the low part of it because I don't need it. Because the, the low part is already from these two sounds right here. This is only player playing the higher frequencies to fill up the space and give some, you know, some high power, let's call it in this way. And yeah, so what I like to do in my in my bass is to compress a lot then. As you can hear, I have two compressors going on uh, because in my bass I don't want too much dynamics. Uh, I really like to compress heavily uh, the sound. Then we have some side chain and also the capitator I really like to use and I probably use uh, this plugin in all of my bass. And then, yeah, and the sub, I really compress it and then I cut what I was not needing, sorry. And then I was, I'm was i sending all of the bass to this bus channel right here, where, I do, where I'm doing a bit of bus compressing. Just a tiny bit, you know, to, to manage the peaks. And then a pull tech, yeah, just to boost a bit the frequency around 100. And then, yeah, a bit of EQ going on. This preset is really good, in my opinion. This is um, a preset that pr basically uh, is a, mud, a muddiness removal and it's really helpful to you know, manage the muddiness around 200 Hz, which it can be really a pain. Yeah, let's move forward and then we can go into the melodic element of the track. We have a background harp right here, which was, uh, was made in Diva. This is pretty much a background element. Then we have the main lead, which comes from Diva. Uh, this preset, yeah, is from Audio Tent. 
there are a lot of stuff going on in this in this sound right here. There is cap decapitator, which gives you know a lot more harmonics to the sound. Then I use the beat crusher from Logic. As you can hear, it gives a lot to the sound. Yeah, this is how it sounds without uh, distortion and, and beat crusher. Yeah, then we have some delay and some reverb. Then I use this mag, mag EQ, which is a great tool if you want to add some air to your sound. You, with this plugin, you have to be really careful because whenever you turn on the plugin, it really gives a lot of volume coming in. So you really have to be careful with the gain staining. As you can hear, I cut a bit uh, into the lower part of the, of the frequencies and I give it a bit of air. Yeah, as you can hear, it gives a lot of volume. Whenever you move this knob, uh, you have to be really careful with this plugin, but it's really good. And then we have this Free Life plugin. This sound, uh, this is how it sounds without. And this is sound, uh, how it sounds with. So it, uh, it has um, a good amount of high frequencies and it works a, a lot also in the mid frequencies. So it really helps this sound to, to shine a bit more. And then we have a, um, an EQ going on to just to cut to what I, what I didn't want into the sound. Because a lot of um, distortion into the sound can have a lot of sub frequencies that you don't want into the sound. So you have to be careful about them. And yeah, then we have this layer right here, which helps the sound into the higher frequencies. Also, this one has a bit crusher going on. As you can hear how much the sound is changing with and without the bit crusher. And then we have a noise layer going on, which I use when when I have to, to make the sound a bit more, with a lot more attack. Cut through the mix a bit more. And you can hear there is a lot of difference with and without. It has a lot more attack, in my opinion, so... As you can hear right here, in the first part of the drop, I like to, to anticipate the main sound without actually playing it. As you can hear, uh, there is a lot of delay and a lot of reverb going on. And the, the first two of these sounds are reversed. These two one are playing the, the main melody, but these two are reversed. And this is a great method to anticipate something. So your brain will start, will start to hear something, that something is happening. But instead of, uh, you know, playing this note right here, which is uh, pretty boring in my opinion. I, I like to, you know, to anticipate with tricks like this one. So reverse it, adding a lot of reverb, a lot of delay. And yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah, let's take a look at the, the lead in the second drop. This is how it sounds all together. So also here you can hear that and see also there is a lot of different layer. This is the main sound, which is I think is uh, not the main sound, but it's really similar to the main uh, to the main sound of the in the that plays in the first part. Uh, but the, when I sent this song for the first time to Colorize, their feedback were like we really like it, but in the second drop we need a more heavy drop after the build up after the bridge. 
we need the drop two to hit stronger. So instead of doing a lot of noise, which there are right here, but I don't like to, you know, to add different sounds uh, to help the, the song hit stronger. So what I did right here was to make the sounds that I already had hit stronger. So I layered these two sounds, three sounds with the noise all together. So you can hear that with this sound by his own, we, we miss a lot of high energy in the, a lot of high frequencies. So what I did was to add different layers. This is the first one. Yeah, so I always try to adding something that really gives something to to the track and just don't layer everything with plenty of sound because it will cause uh, most of the most of the time problem also in the face of the sound itself so yeah you have to be really careful and also the la the noise layer here is playing like in the first part and yeah I think that that's it. Uh, we should talk a bit about the drums. So, what I like to do with my with my drums is to in the second drop, so the main part of the song, I like to introduce something that were not was not hearing before. So, as you can see, there are three different sounds that come in in the second drop. And there are that are not playing in the first drop. And this is something that is really helpful for the arrangement of the song because you are adding something that basically you didn't hear it before. So that's it. Let's take a, um, a look on how it's the drum are sounding. And this is sounds also with how it sounds also also with the percussion. What I like to do with my drums is to have um, like two or three sounds that are the main part of the drums and then layer stuff, you know, build stuff around two or three solid samples. So which are probably this one. And this one. Then we have a top loop, a tambourine, and it of uh, one I had hit, another tambourine, and then in the second part of the song, as you as I told you before, we have a ride going on. And then another I had that are playing left and right. And this is really helpful to keep the, the drum fresh because as you can hear without this without this sound. It's good. I mean in the second in the first drop it sounds with uh, it sounds good without these three layers. But as I told you before, I in the second drop, I was needing a lot of power. So I add these three elements right here. So you, as you can hear also in the, in the contest, with and without. I mean, it's something that you can probably not hear. It's something more that you can feel. It really helps to make the higher part of the frequencies uh, a lot fuller, in my opinion. Then we have this percussion right here that are working in the in this area right, right here. Another percussion loop is from Kashmir. And then we have the claps. And yeah, let's take a look at the 
bus. So what I what I do with my my drum is to compress them. Before I compress them, I cut what I don't want into my sound. I do some compression. Then right here I boost a lot into the 3000 frequencies. So some uh, some EQ going on. Then I add a bit of hair also with the mug. And this is like my yeah, most useful plugin when I'm designing the drums. Because basically when you're adding a lot of different sounds into your drums, I, I don't like where, when drums are, are really long and not that much impactful. So this plugin allows me to, to work a bit into the, you know, the transit of the sounds. This is very slight, it's not that big, but it really helps to keep them a lot more smart, a lot more impactful, but not so crowded. This is really my go-to plugin when I'm working on drums. And then also here we have the Pro L going on. Because also here there, are, there were a lot of peaks. We have also a field going on. And these little sounds uh, helps the, um, the groove, in my opinion. Okay, so I think that we can take a look at the at the atmosphere right now. Um, this sounds right here was the sound that mainly allows me to produce this track because I was looking for inspiration on Splice and I found this uh, this weird kind of vocal sample and this is the sounds that um, basically all the track was, was made around this sample right here I think it's something that yeah, it's really weird but it's really good at the same time then when we are talking about atmosphere in my tracks, uh, I use a lot of ear candies, which sound like this. Because I always like to keep the space full, you know, to keep the listener engaged with your song as much as possible. And this kind of ear candies really helps to, to keep the listener into your track. And yeah, then we have some Hatmos going on in the back. This one is bent left and right. And then, yeah, in the intro, I used this, this sound right here. which basically are similar in talking about notes to the lead. And this helps the, the first part of the song to introduce you into the, into the drop. And then I use, I use them also into the breakdown, in the breakdown. And then, yeah, we have also these two weird sounds that I found in Logic libraries. Because again, in the breakdown, I was looking for something uh, new and fresh that, were, uh, that was not here before in the first row. And as you can hear, really helps the uh, the high frequencies of the breakdown because in the breakdown you you are filtered down basically all most of your sounds 
So you still need some, let's call them high frequency sound. And uh, so this too really helps the, the breakdown, in my opinion. Uh, also, yeah, we have this part going on in the breakdown. Not also in the breakdown, but also in the in the first row. And this was made in Serum, I think, yeah. We have a lot of automation going on right here. Oh yeah, right here there are two... Two riser. Which comes from Logic. So this is how them sound. And then we have some effects, but really, really standard. We have white noise, basically. We have a crash. I always like to use delays on my crash. And then we have white noise, simply white noise. So this is how it sounds, uh, the bridge for the second drop. Oh yeah, a cool a cool thing about um, this project is this reversed kick. It's a reversed kick. I I use it um, not in all my songs, but like in this track, you can see that I muted a lot of stuff because the main lead was coming back. As you can see right there, there are a lot of automation in the main lead going on. And, but right there, I played a bit with, with the automation to give the, like, I'm taking it back and then I give it to you, like, in the full power. So, uh, this, this is a good uh, way to, you know, to introduce you the, the most uh, powerful part of the song, in my opinion. And this is something that in the, back in the EDM times were really used. Uh, nowadays it's not that much used, but it's really, it's a powerful tool in my opinion. So yeah, I think we've done it. Yeah, if you have any, any question about the, the project itself, write them in the comment below and or text me on instagram and yeah thank you leo for having me and i hope uh, this was helpful for you and yeah hope you have a great day and um, yeah cheers, cheers.